Lights, sirens, heroes. You're listening to the Unreasonable Grounds podcast. <laughs> I got coffee. I've got donuts. Mike's here with me. Welcome everybody back to episode 11 of the Unreasonable Grounds podcast. This is going to be mini episode number two of the Top Hollywood Cop Card Challenge. And this is going to be the episode where we talk about and put up face to face the 94 Porsche 911 Turbo with the whale tail from Bad Boys 1. It's got to go up against the 2001 Ferrari F50 Marinello. And anybody that knows Ferraris has to say it the right way. A Marinello from Bad Boys 2. Mikey, how are you doing? I think there's got to have a, some gesticulation for that. Some gesticulation or testiculation? You got to pinch your fingers together and have Marinello. The Marinello. So here we are in episode 11. This is going to be, as we said, the matchup for the Bad Boys films. Not talking about the third one because, again, I have my feelings about the third one. But this is for episodes one and two, the iconic cars. But every single episode, we break donut. It is our tradition. It's what we do. It is giving me diabetes. I don't know what the hell is going on. I'm having the sweats half the time after going four years without donuts. For the last year, I've had too many. Mikey, what do you... (laughs) You just gave the Uh. recorder an error. (laughs) <laughs> it's fine it's fine i'm sure this it's is fine. fine it's fine oh. getting rid of this it is the og apple fritter it is that's right the uh the tango hotel apple fritter okay so see of uh late night donut run uh just before we started here and uh i took my daughter with me and forgot her soother so she screamed like a banshee the whole time so the guy at the drive through yeah. windows like just take it take it <laughs> pretty much just i think it was close to that you're like they're leave. like uh the poor girl's like uh, i hope you have a good night <laughs> <laughs> and the baby's like the baby's like full on like losing his voice and screaming so much just like eh, eh. <laughs> <laughs> sounds like me after having that other donut we had from yeah. mcdonald's absolutely uh oh, okay yeah. so you I got tried to eat the keith richards donut so oh it's <laughs> horrible so you've got the og you've got the th you've got the apple fritter yeah. okay and this is where i'm gonna end up saying that i'm a glutton i've already had an apple fritter today oh no and it was like an hour and a half ago no like no it's more like three hours was ago. it a carny donut it was not a carny donut it was from dream donuts again Oh, nice! From that place, we went to the market here in Parksville. Anybody familiar with Vancouver Island? They got a, a you know, an, I wouldn't say it's an amazing market, but it's an outdoor market, and people uh, bring these donuts, and they're called a company called Dream Donuts. And uh, somebody may ask me to take it and and just basically try it again. So you know what I did? I tried it again, and I absolutely loved it. So, yeah, I, I was absolutely stunned. I was blown away. It was a really good apple fritter. But we're not talking about that apple fritter right now. What well, we are talking nope. about, my choice, the score donut from Dream Donuts. Ooh, the All right. score donut. It's the score donut. We didn't try this one last time. I won't lie. I got a soft spot for the score McFlurries. So, <sighs> okay. If so I'm ever going to like lose control for a McFlurry, it's going to be the score one. Nice. I can only do so much for the diabetes. Oh, yeah. Before this knocks me out, because we're going to do two episodes yeah. tonight, so I'm excited about it. So let's do this, Mikey. Uh, oh, It's 11 episodes, so let's just cheers it to episode 11. Cheers to episode cheers. 11. Nom, nom, nom. And a couple cavities that the RCMP have helped me uh, pay to get rid of, to fill. Um, yeah. They're just yeah. feeling that sugar. <laughs> All right, so we're moving on. We got the donuts out of the way. Let's get into this, Mike. Let's actually start talking shop. Let's get into these yeah. two cars. So, very first thing, we're going to do a quick review. We're going to talk about the 94 Porsche 911 Turbo. It's a, obviously, I think it's like a 3.6 liter. Tell me what's going on. Tell me about this, this, this car, how you remember it, and why this car is on the list. Well, I mean, the scene at the end of Bad Boys 1 uh, in the airfield, it's, it's pretty iconic. It, it is the climax of the movie. It's, I mean, what else do you say? It's, it really is, like the the fin- grand finale right like it it really kind of i think for me when i first saw bad boys and they were just screaming along the runway like i was like 
it was definitely one of those moments where I was like, yeah, I want to do that, you know, like. <laughs> yeah, because I mean, you're talking about, and in that particular scene, I guess we're talking about Marcus driving the car at that time, right? Because Mike was in the passenger seat. Yes. Because that's when that he, he's, about right. he's sitting there screaming. He's like, that's how you drive. That's how you drive. Like yes. he's telling him because he's going for that, yeah. whatever it is, the partition, the open partition at the very end of the airfield. When yes, he's, when he's right. racing bad dude on the side there and they're playing a little bit of chicken on that one, right? Absolutely. So I, I will say this for a Mike Lowry, Mike Lowry, Mike Lowry, Mike Lowry car, uh, for the time in 1995. So the film was released in 1995, obviously, uh, the bad boys film, the original for the time that was basically like what are you what are you driving in 1995 i mean obviously we're going to talk about the mitsubishi eclipses later but if you're going full style miami in 95 the porsche 911 is the car oh yeah definitely especially like i would say the radical body style particularly for that porsche was somewhat iconic of that era i mean you look at it now and it doesn't really look too groundbreaking but this is what 20 seven years later almost right and you know that vehicle came out in a style with the wing on the back and the whale the, tail yep yeah the total whale tail spoiler and uh at, at the risk of sounding like it's a bad thing i really like the almost like volkswagen style like front lights on it right the fact that they were almost separate entities upon themselves next to what would be your trunk space in the front there, right? So um, I don't know. It's just a slick looking car. It was definitely ahead of its time. And uh, it, there's a reason why they had it on the, the poster for that thing, right? So, you know, it just looked badass. Yeah, when you think about cop cars, and, and this is what we're doing, we're looking at cop car movies, and we're talking about what in the early 90s really set the iconic cop film for the entire genre and how it moved forward for the next, I would say, and probably argue for the next 20 years. This was what they needed to do. This is what Michael Bay needed was to push this movie beyond all else and just throw everything on the table and just go for it. Having a cop yeah. car... And a couple of detectives take on a Porsche 911 Turbo and have it as their, I, don't, I hate to say it, but like a daily driven exotic, you know, uh, sports car for their police vehicle. Uh, you don't get any more boss than that. Well, and I think when it comes to the actual like character interaction too, right? Like, you know, Martin Lawrence and Will Smith have those arguments. Oh, Mike Larry and his trust fund and stuff like that, right? Like, you know, this is a guy who's living life on the edge, right? Like he's that radical, you know, Hollywood mythos gunslinging cop who's, you know, living at the, you know, the cusp of, you know, you know, radicalness when it comes to law enforcement. And yeah, if he's got <laughs> zeros in the bank, you know he's going to be blowing it on a sweet set of wheels, right? <laughs> Quarter million dollars <laughs> sold, right? I like, love it. I love it. And it's, I mean, even then, we're not talking like the Porsche 911 Turbo was not that much. Like, it's not supercar, it's not elite exotic. We're not talking about no. something, you know, even because you're talking about even the McLaren F1s for that time, 95, 96. You know, the yeah. you're talking about the, the really big Jags, the XJs, like you're talking about, or XK, XJ, whatever it was, the really big one from Gone in 60 Seconds. But you're talking about those were supercars back then, but this wasn't just that. This was just a badass set of wheels. On well, and I think, pardon me, I no, think no. one of the biggest difference between some of the cars that you just mentioned and the 911 is this car was mass produced. Right. Like a lot of those supercars, while you could consider them, quote, production automobiles, I don't think they really fall into the criteria that a normal kind of production car uh, would come under. Yeah. And, and it, exactly. I mean, it, it's definitely it's what they needed for the film. It's it, it wasn't blow your hair back. This is completely ridiculous. But like you said, it, it, just, it did the job and yeah. it's for what it was. It was really good. Moving on. So accord, according to the internets, and oh, the uh, internets. if I read it on the internet, it must, it must be, be true. true. The 911 Turbo two-door coupe was $99,000 US in 1994. 
Yeah, 99 grand. That's pretty good. When you're thinking about the wheel and the power you're going to get with that, um, yeah. not only are you talking about the wheels and power, you're talking about the prestige that comes with you know whipping around in a 911 turbo. So, yeah. I mean... You know what? I think in all honesty, when it comes to balancing that supercar raw horsepower and awesomeness with something that is actually affordable, uh, I think it's actually... He's getting a good bang from his buck, so... Mike Larry might not be quite blowing the dollars as much as we thought. <laughs> Maybe not, but yeah, I think what he was blowing the dollars on was the, they say it was a 99, but it could possibly be a 2001, depending on where you look and research. The 550 yep. Marinello, the Marinello, if we're Marinello. talking, is that what we're doing? Yep. We're doing the hand thing? Marinello. Oh, uh, I think so. From Bad Boys 2. From Bad Boys 2. Yeah. It is the car that no one will forget is ripping down the, what is that, the aqueduct or whatever you want to call it, the 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 bridge, I guess you would say, going into yeah, Miami but- with the cars flying everywhere. It's Mike Lowry spinning that thing out, turning it sideways, just letting off the automatic rifle. Like, Oh, for sure. This is the car. Mikey, what do you think about the Ferrari 550 Marinello? Uh, I'm a big fan. I think uh, it it took what we had sort of established as, again, and not to sound negative, the 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 super ego that is Michael Lowry, Michael Lowry, and and puts an exclamation point behind it. Because again, you know, this guy's working Miami Dick, so he needs to be able to up his game and you know roll in the streets of Miami in a giant silver Ferrari. Like again, it just it. it I think it really helps bring the character to life as well and just looks super badass and really just shows that overperformance characteristic that he is the bad boy, right? And he just balls out in that thing for every second that's on the film. It's great. And it, it's if it's not getting showered in glass from, a, what was it, the Haitian gangsters flying off the yes. top of the parkade, if it's not sliding out and, you know, throwing rounds down, if it's not swerving underneath the whatever that was, a Ford Taurus that fell off the back of that car transporter that the Haitian yes. gangsters are all throwing out, if it's not all the rest of that, the tone, the accent on that rev and that engine... Yeah. And oh, Michael yeah. Bay's ability to go and, you know, the sound quality in that movie for that car was insane. Absolutely, yeah. Like, it's well, that high-pitched you know, Ferrari wind, like, oh, man. Yeah, I, I, uh, I hopped onto the Wikipedia earlier, and uh, I saved the page here. So, uh, it's looking at a V12 with over 478 horsepower. So, stock stock and so that's it right like stock. that's just rolling off the a the assembly line yeah exactly so, so how much 450 abs- so it's 450 horse uh 478 i think oh, it was Jesus. 478 okay so al- almost 500 horse yeah okay uh in in a v12 so i can only imagine yeah. how, how, how much are they running <laughs> for that how much would it that 90 if we're talking about a 90 let's go with a 2001 because the film came out i think it was like whatever it was yeah. 2002 2003 somewhere no it's actually it's like 2004 i think and with that film coming out if we looked at like a 2001 uh ferrari 550 the, marinello what do you think was retail msrp on that one the MSRP on that one was two hundred and forty-eight thousand five hundred dollars. Okay, Mike Lowry's balling now. <laughs> not one, not even two, but two and a half Porsche nine elevens. <laughs> oh man! So he steps up in that Marinello. I mean, oh yeah. yeah what? Oh my god! It was it was honestly sad when uh, Martin Lawrence shot up his dash. <laughs> oh, and he boy, <laughs> it's funny when he's telling the shooter, and like Brrr, he ends up, he's like, "Shoot outside!" <laughs> you know? Oh man, that's okay. not gonna buff out. <laughs> okay, so if we're gonna start looking at it, we have used and we talked about in the in episode ten, which was uh, matchup number one. So, Mike, we talked about that, and we said, "What are we really gonna use as a point of reference? What is our?" Uh, category, I guess you would say, and how we're going to compare these two cars. First yeah. and foremost, like, I know the later ones, but first and foremost, we're going to look at performance. So performance vehicle. So the actual vehicles themselves, we've got a $99,000 
Porsche 911 Turbo. Yeah. I don't know. You can't beat a V12. No. Well, I, I, and that's it. Hands down, this isn't fair for the Porsche. It is literally grossly outclassed on all and any realms of specs with the, with the exception of affordability. So hands down, performance, Ferrari, not an arguable topic. Yeah, and I would say I 100% agree with you that Ferrari is going to take performance. Yeah, and anybody else that disagrees, you can unsubscribe. <laughs> <laughs> get get the hell out of here you know or Just maybe dude or maybe they're being unreasonable and if they're being unreasonable well, that's you know what, what i love i invite the feedback you know and and i will defend their opinion and their right to have it even if it is wrong <laughs> <laughs> okay so now we're going to look at iconic level what have you got to say on this one Okay, my thing is, is that the Porsche 911 Turbo, for talking about Bad Boys number one, all right, the film wasn't my absolute favorite. Bad Boys 2 is my jam. That is exactly... I, I agree. That's a movie 100%. that I like. That's the one that I remember the most. And that uh, that 911, and even going back and watching that scene again from the very end, um, iconic level, yes. Uh, it's mm-hmm. in the poster. The poster is uh, an, an icon all on its own for Bad Boys 1. And yeah. yes, it is there, that low angle shot of the guys coming out and they've got the the Porsche there. Okay, yeah. yes, in its own, did it outdo the actors using the vehicle? Absolutely not, I don't think. Mm-hmm. Um, you, you're going to be hard pressed to beat Will Smith and Martin Lawrence. You're just, it's not going to work. But as we look at the Ferrari, that Ferrari and the way that Michael Bay filmed this and just produced it, directed it and put it out there, that... Ferrari was the star of that film that if people look back at it, I guarantee you, if you say, well, how was Will Will Smith, you know, Big Willie style, how was Will Smith's role in that one? And I think people will just say, yeah, it was Mike Lowry. But then you say, like, what do you remember about that, that, uh, that movie? And they'll say the same thing, the aqueduct, whatever the hell that's called, where they're, they're driving along the water. They will remember that and they'll remember that Ferrari getting shot up and spun around yeah. and then the the weapons coming out of the back seat. Yeah, so I think I think I can take it almost a step further uh, and but carry on the exact same uh comment that you have in in a sense where the fact where if we were comparing the cars outside of the movie, I'd say the 911 would take it. It's a much more iconic vehicle in automotive history as a whole. Uh the Ferrari's badass for sure. However, doesn't have that total icon classic now that's not what we're talking about this is the hollywood cop car challenge right this is about the cars in the movie and the impact that they have and how iconic they were within that film now was the nine on the movie poster yes and it was chosen to be there because it looked cool now, you talk to anybody that's seen Bad Boys 2 and you'd be like, open up YouTube and show me your favorite scene from Bad Boys 2. They're going to throw it open, probably to that highway chase with the Ferrari just absolutely owning the road and dominating that moment in the film. And then it's like, oh, and by the way, Will Smith and Martin Lawrence are in that car. But, you know, we're getting into almost a Knight Rider-esque car movie and opposed to oh and by the way there's david hasselhoff right yeah. like this is absolutely all about the car it steals the show it is the icon of that part of the movie for sure so yeah okay, my for- votes with you and the ferrari for sure yeah the ferrari's gonna take it it just absolutely has to uh but then we're also going to look at the use as a police vehicle and i think we talked about this one in the last matchup and i really like this category itself yeah so the use in the 911, okay, yeah, I get it. They're dragging down, hitting that strip. Like we're really looking at like two comparing two major car scenes, cop car scenes in these two films. Um, and I'll say this about the airstrip: was it suspenseful? Yes, it was. How they used it as a police vehicle? Okay, I guess you can say that. Uh, a lot of revenge, a lot of all the rest of that thing going on, but use as a cop car i don't know i I just i I just don't see it unfortunately yes it was very a pretty car in the film it it caught Mm -hmm. your eye 
but the police angle to it, I don't, I don't think was great. I mean, I don't know if you agree with me on this one, Mike, but what do you think about the Ferrari? So uh, I'm with you there. And again, I, I want to expand on it on the general duty usage. There's not a lot out of bad boys one that at least pops up in my mind. And I didn't rewatch the movie to like bring it fresh into my mind. And I'd considered doing that. But for me, if it's something that really stands out and we might blurry, be blurring the lines back into the iconic status category a bit, but if it was going to be something that actually stood out, I would remember it from the few times that I've seen the movie. And there's nothing about the 911 that makes me go, oh yeah, wow, they use that as a cop car. However, the Ferrari on the other hand, absolutely. And so... There's a scene in Bad Boys 2. There's actually there's more than one where it shows the Ferrari being used as their generic transport around town. And as boring as that may seem, you talk about the engine sound of the Ferrari and how how much of a show stealer it, it is when it's on scene on screen. It, it's it really kind of feels the moment. And again, like you said, Michael Bay's filming style, his production, the direction, just the way he brings the audio in, even for that brief three second clip where that Ferrari pulls up and park and boom, as he, you know, cuts the engine and gives it one last rev. It's, it resonates more. Right. Yeah, it's and totally it's, it's, it's totally memorable. While at the same time, just doing regular cop car shit. They're getting from point A to point B and probably a coffee and a donut along the way. <laughs> you imagine that? <laughs> like Martin Lawrence, so Marcus's character goes and blows a couple of rounds through the airbag. You know, and he, and he has the conversation with him in the captain's office where they're doing the goose frabo and they're like rubbing yeah. the ears thing where he's like, he's all pissed off. And he's like, he's like, I got some people so far up my ass. I'm going to blow up my nose or something like that. <laughs> it's, it's awesome. <laughs> but I, I think, Mike, I think what we're doing is, I, I don't think we need to argue that one at all, that the police use is going to no. go to the Ferrari 100, Absolutely. 100%. Yeah. Uh, the last thing we can even possibly talk about, because we're keeping these uh, episodes short, is going to be badassery. And I don't even think we need to talk about it, because I think this thing already won. It is. It's, it's Again, it's a clean sweep for the Ferrari, in my opinion. Uh, I don't think it was really necessarily that fair for the 911 in hindsight. And uh, not to take away from an... 9-11, because let's face it, if somebody tossed me the keys, <laughs> I'd be like, thank you. <laughs> but I'd be grinding I'd, some clutches, and, but I'd, I'd figure yeah, it out. Yeah, the this is a Ferrari, man. It's badass. You can't, it's a Ferrari. You absolutely can't like, beat that. And the, to add to the badassery in this whole thing, and if anybody's unfamiliar with Michael Bay movies, these two cars, as a bit of a trivia, these two cars, the 94 Porsche 911 Turbo and the Marinello, the Marinello, yeah. were both Michael Bay's vehicles. His personal yeah. ride that he allowed. And I read something uh, very recently. It was an interview with Michael Bay after, I think it was like after the release of Bad Boys 3. And he actually got asked, he's like, well, would you ever change anything about the vehicles that you put in your films? And he said that initially the Porsche 911, Porsche wanted nothing to do with Bad Boys. He wanted, they wanted yeah. nothing as a brand to do with the film, nothing to do with Michael Bay, nothing to do with Will Smith. But after yep. the fact, and they took a look at how we filmed that movie, they went and threw him a giant party for Porsche because they were probably selling off the floor, like just completely oh, I, selling no out doubt. throughout the Southern US. And on top of that, looking at the Marinello, also Michael Bay's uh, vehicle as well, too. So guess what, Michael Bay? You got two badass cars. One of them ended up walking out of this thing, the winner. Match number two. We don't have to go to Instagram. No. and You know what? I got to say one more thing for the Marinello at the risk of making this a longer episode. Badassery. The Marinello gets a bonus point in my book for giving that little quiet nod to Don Johnson down in <laughs> Miami. But we'll talk more about that in a future episode. <laughs> we will, because we got to. We got to. We absolutely have to. So, guys... 
thank you so much for checking out. The winner of this one, as we say, is going to be the 1999 or 2001, whatever the hell we're looking at, the Ferrari 550 Marinello. It's moving on. Marinello. Marinello. Got to get that hand in there. It's going to go to the Marinello, and they are going on to... It gets eight miles to the gallon. Oh, yes. <laughs> Imagine. <laughs> I'm going to drive to Nanaimo. I got to fill up my tank again. <laughs> it's moving it's moving on to round number two along with the limo from SWAT. Thank you so much for listening, guys. This is gonna be again episode number eleven. This is the Unreasonable Grounds podcast. This is what Mike and I do. We break donuts, we talk about cop stuff, we nerd out, and we have a good time, but it's all for you guys. This is your chance to switch off without switching off. We're excited to have you out. Check us out. Check out the website, www.theunreasonablegroundspodcast.com. Check out Google Podcasts, Spotify, as well as the iHeartRadio app to go and check out episodes. We are almost at 1,000 downloads. I am losing my mind and pulling my hair out that I actually have to spend like 500 bucks on buying patches because I made the promise that if we got to 1,000 episodes, and thousand down, well, not thousand episodes, thousand downloads that I was going to go out and personally buy patches, and we're going to be sharing those in the near future, hopefully. So, guys, check out the podcast, download, subscribe, spread the word, let people know in your detachments, let people know in your other police agencies, and if you're getting into this job, we wish you the best of luck, guys. Have a wonderful day, Mikey. Parting words. Ah, uh, yeah. Sorry, distraction. Dog coming in. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a dog. I'm going to have to edit that out. It was my wife. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to edit that out. It's awesome. <laughs> Mikey, par- <laughs> parting words. I'm looking forward to those patches and I'm looking forward to the next episode. Uh, I'm going to give everybody a little hint. We will not need paper or scissors. Oh, God. It's going to be horrible. That's okay. I can make those jokes now. I'm a dad. But awesome. (laughs) (laughs) All right, guys. Thank you very much for tuning in. We'll get you on the next episode. Lights, sirens, heroes. You're listening to the Unreasonable Grounds podcast.